Hello, everyone. So welcome to the machine learning MSC's um, breakout room. So I'm Dmitry, and I'm the program director for DSML and a deputy program director for uh, ML and CSML. So Mark Herbster is the program director for those programs. He's not uh, around today. Um, and uh, I hope I will be able to present all three of them. So we also have Liz here, who's a uh, program administrator for those uh, MSCs, and Andreas, who uh, is an um, alumnus of one of them, um, MO, I think. Um, <clears throat> right, so I'm going to you know, say a few words about these programs. We tend to think of them, so even though they're three separate programs, so we, they share um, a lot of modules. And although uh, there are some you know, details about how one of them differs from another, um, we kind of treat them as a group. And in particular, when it comes to projects, we'll talk about that. Uh, so I'm going to say a few words about you know, why you should study this program since uh, how you might want to you know, select between them uh, if you're still unsure. And um, I'm going to have a little tour of teaching year and, um, and talk a little bit about projects. And then Andreas is going to share his experience of studying one of those. And then we'll have time for Q&A. So basically, all three of those programs are very intensive uh, programs teaching both foundations and some applications of ML. Um, and CSML is taught jointly with statistics department. And so it emphasizes the study of statistics models more heavily. DSML also have access to some of the uh, stats module. Um, and uh, all programs, they you know, follow the same pattern in that you have uh, two terms of teaching, and then you have you know, exam term, and then you have a summer project, which many students you know, think of as the, the, as the most important component. And I think it is the most important component of the program in some way. <clears throat> So all three programs are um, quite intensive and we don't really have you know, time to teach you all the necessary uh, background maths and background coding. So you should have reasonably strong mathematical background, especially in the areas of linear algebra, calculus and probability. Um, I will mention some of the resources at the end that you know you might be interested in if you want to uh, brush up some of uh, those, especially if you know you did your degree in those years some years ago and now um, you're coming back safe after some experience in industry, which is not uncommon for um, our students. Uh, yeah, so strong mathematical background is needed. And also we don't really have, you know, this is not a um, coding uh, degree in the sense that we can't teach you. Uh, we don't have time, we have to teach you machine learning. So uh, you do need to have some basic coding proficiency. At the moment, I mean, Python is the, you know, the go-to language for machine learning. Having said that, some courses uh, might use other languages like say Julia and historically we used MATLAB I think less and less courses use MATLAB these days so let's talk a little bit about you know the individual programs so uh, let's start with CSML maybe since ML references CSML in its description so <laughs> so CSML uh, is a program so we think of uh, CSML is a program for mostly for uh, students who 
may wish to continue them in higher academic training, for example, do a PhD. Well, of course, this is not, you know, uh, a rule and uh, clearly not everyone who does CSMO uh, then goes on to do a PhD, but it is a very good program if you want to. Uh, in particular, CSMO and NMO, as you will see, they have access to um, some modules from uh, world famous Gatsby neuroscience units and uh, those modules are very challenging and a Gatsby unit teaches them as uh, part of their foundation program for their PhD students, but they open those modules for uh, these two MSCs as well. And um, um, they are um, some of the more advanced, you know, somewhat more theoretically heavy models that we have here. Um, so ML program is quite similar to CSML, but it doesn't have the uh, core statistics modules. And that means that you have a little bit more flexibility uh, to take other CS modules in your areas of interest. Um, again, a lot of students from ML do, you know, stay and do a PhD program. Um, but of course, uh, as, I, as I said before, like the, that, that is not the rule in any way. So DSML is somewhat different from those two. So if we are to compare those three, I believe that CSML and ML are a little bit closer together. And, they, uh, and DSML um, has somewhat less strict you know, requirements in terms of formal mathematics and statistics training. So um, some of those theoretically heavy modules, like the Gatsby modules or advanced topics in ML, they're not open for DSML. However, DSML has a much larger you know, breadth of modules available. In particular, the, there are some optional modules with you know, some emphasis on finance that are open for DSMLs. And I guess, so probably more DSMLs uh, proportionally end up in you know, the industry after the program rather than when, when compared with the other two. Um, so as for the individual um, modules, uh, I believe Liz is going to put some links in chat. Oh, by the way, Liz, I'm not, it's very hard for me to present and maintain chat. If there are some messages uh, that I need to address, do. I mean, yeah. I also like feel free to interrupt me and uh, ask questions. We will have separate time for questions afterwards, but if there's something pressing, let me know. Um, so for, you know, the, individual list of modules, I suggest that you go and click on those links that uh, Liz put in chat, but I guess you have already done so as you have come to this open day event. Um, so now I'm just going to have a little tour of you know, how, the, uh, how the programs work. So for all of them, you need to take eight modules over two terms. So some of those modules are core and the rest are optional. And the uh, vast majority of people take four modules in term one and four modules in term two, and this is the recommended split. Although every year we do have someone taking a five, three split instead. Um, so each module is 15 credits. So you get 120 credits in total, and then you get 60 more credits from your dissertation. So you can see from that, that you know, your your dissertation is a very significant part of your degree. Um, so in terms one and two, you know, uh, you have your uh, you you have your lectures and assignments for those modules. The modules in term one are generally more, you know, foundational theoretical modules are in term one, whereas the modules in term two are more um, 
slide than you know building on those foundations uh, with some exceptions as well so and then you have uh, Easter holidays after which you have exams in term three and as soon as the exams are over which is early June your work on the project more or less immediately starts so uh, so let's talk a bit about projects because the way we run them is a little bit different to how the rest of you know IXN uh, that Carolyn was talking about is run so the projects fall roughly into you know two main categories so there are projects offered by uh, CS academics and there are projects that are offered by industry partners uh, academic projects are a great stepping stone towards potentially you know doing a PhD it is very common situation where a person uh, finds their PhD supervisor by first doing an MSc project with them uh, similarly industry projects are it is not uncommon for them to you know lead to uh, some hiring opportunities and what we often see is you know people doing a project with a company and then being hired by that company in some uh, ml role and what we especially like to see is that a few years later they might come back to us and offer projects to the successive generation of students uh, so the way our projects are structured is that we have a project day in January where all the potential supervisors be it industry partners and academics present their projects and then uh, the next couple of months students select uh, their project and we are not really imposing projects on students we encourage you to find the project which is uh, the best one for you and um, and then you have to work full time on that throughout the summer and you submit your dissertation at the beginning of September. And for many students, this is the most exciting part of their degree. <clears throat> um, so as you might expect, we uh, see our alumni uh, then going on and uh, becoming employed by a variety of you know, companies in various tech and finance uh, you know, and, and, and other areas. Uh, so as I promised, uh, and I think it probably is a good idea from, to include this slide, so you, because this is a question which comes up often is that what happens if you know my math is a little bit rusty or my coding skills are a little bit rusty so i think these are well clearly there are lots of possible there are lots of resources out there to help you with that but here are some that we recommend so mathematics and machine learning is a book which is freely available online i believe uh written by mark dysonbot who is a professor in our department and uh that one you could use to you know, brush up your math skills and you also would need to you know make sure you're competent in coding and python for data analysis is one possible source of uh of that um okay um andreas would you like to join in and you know tell us a little bit about your experience Yes, yeah, so, so thanks. Uh, um, I can carry on sharing. Hello, yeah. Hi. So, um, oh. I don't know. Let me, let yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know if this is uh, up to date. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been, um, I, I've been the course uh, more than 15 years ago. So I, I just, uh, this is just my impression from what I got from the course. So I, I, th I thought the course overall was excellent. And uh, um, the, the reason is that uh, uh, there's a very uh, high quality of teaching and uh, um, it's, it's taught by some of the, of the experts in the field. 
Uh, so I was in particular in the intelligent systems um, masters, uh, which afterwards I think it was renamed into. So I think it it's, uh, corresponds to machine learning uh, uh, right now. Um, and uh, I had the opportunity also to work uh, on a project. Uh, so for the summer project, uh, um, I worked with um, a professor who was then here in, uh, in the Gatsby uh, unit. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's like a, a, a short master's uh, thesis, uh, essentially. So um, it required uh, some programming. Um, so it was, I think it was in MATLAB. And uh, so it was rather basic programming for numerical uh, methods. Um, and um, I had to understand some of the literature around uh, semi-supervised learning, which is an area of uh, a particular topic in uh, machine learning. Um, so it was about um, applying uh, some uh, uh, algorithms and uh, numerical techniques to to a particular paper on semi-supervised learning and then writing up a thesis. Um, so, uh, so the project can be quite, uh, quite intense. So it's, it's good to be, uh, to be careful with the scheduling and uh, communicating, contacting your supervisor. Um, I would also recommend uh, that, um, um, as I said, the, the course is has a, has a, some uh, experts who are uh, who are teaching the uh, the different uh, classes, and uh, it did give me a, a good um, a good understanding of of the basic uh, uh, techniques and algorithms in machine learning, which which has been useful throughout my further career. Um, so what I have used is. Uh, is the the knowledge of of specific uh, machine learning uh, uh, approaches and um, this i have done um, uh, during my research uh, and uh, also during my my work in the industry uh, so after right after the uh, right after the course i went straight to a phd uh, in ucl in fact and i spent uh, several years uh, in different research positions um in the uk and abroad um and afterwards i moved to 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 the industry so uh, so now i'm currently working uh, uh, in applied data science so I, as you probably know there is a, a big area of of a, a big number of jobs in this uh, uh, of this type of jobs um yeah about some tips uh, i would uh, yeah i would recommend also uh, uh, refreshing some of the math skills, like especially the probability, basic probability and linear algebra, understanding uh, things like matrices and uh, singular value decomposition and so on. These are used uh, are used a lot. Uh, 